Hello and welcome to the Wall Street Journal's big interview. I'm here today with Spignev Brzezinski, former national security advisor to President Carter, advisor to presidents, presidential candidates, uh, now with Johns Hopkins School of Advanced International Studies and author of a new book, Strategic Visions. And the Center for Strategic and International Studies. Yes, yes, correct. And the future of American foreign policy. Well, probably our listeners will suspect that I had in mind the decline and then the fall of America. Actually, I was using the reference to Rome and Byzantium as a different point of reference. Namely, I had in mind the relationship that's evolving between the United States and China. The point I was making was that Rome declined, barbarians overrun it, it disappeared, and yet for almost a thousand years afterwards, Byzantium continued to prosper. It had more intelligent policy, more intelligent approach to the world, and it prospered. But the point I was making was that today that's not quite so possible. Namely, that if America declined dramatically, or for that matter, if China declined dramatically, it would affect the other party very adversely. That there is a fundamental interdependence now in the world that in fact makes relationships between major powers not a zero-sum game, but a game in which we both have to strive for win-win outcomes. Mm -hmm. Well, I do think that by and large, the kind of metastability that existed, for example, in the previous century, which was of course then punctuated by huge struggles for global power, metastability plus struggle for global hegemony, that this is not likely in this century. I think in this century, the choice is increasingly between intensifying turmoil or some accommodation among major powers in which some may be more preeminent than others, but not a single one can dominate. Mm -hmm. the, the U.S. is not uh, a leavener in that process? The U.S. can be the preeminent one, but not the dominant one. You know, President Bush II spoke of America's role in the 21st century as commanded by God and commissioned by history to be the leader. I don't think that diagnosis. You, you is don't going feel to comfortable with that theological vision? Theological is the right way to describe it, yeah. but not as geostrategic. Yeah. Well, in, in the 1990s saw the U.S. Uh, in an unparalleled position in the world, uh, did it not? And we blew it. Yeah. Uh, describe how that happened. Well, by coincidence of two conditions. One, a kind of domestic lapse into an era of self gratification, even in greed, things are going well. And in the meantime, the disparities in the society are getting more acute. Social mobility slows down dramatically. This wasn't the U.S. instead perhaps backing off a little bit and letting the world find its way well, without perhaps, intruding? But in the meantime, uh, enjoying itself. Uh, and then combining that before too long with a kind of military unilateralism, its house in order played the preeminent role if it is intelligent about it. I'm hopeful that we can get our house in shape because I still think we have residual assets that enable us to maintain preeminence for quite some time to come, provided we're prepared to tackle our domestic problems. But secondly, on the global scene, I try to advance in my book a concept of a global vision in which the United States plays a role in enlarging the West by sucking in Turkey, by drawing in Russia if it democratizes, and at the same time plays a role in the Far East similar to that of Great Britain in Europe in the 19th century. Mm. The balancer, the country which maintains equilibrium, doesn't fight wars on the mainland, but tries to reconcile Japan and China, mediate China and India, develop a partnership with China if it's possible, and in that sense is a key player, but not dominant. Mm -hmm. Japan. Yeah. House in order? W w what do you mean, house in order? Well, tackling the problems that we have with innovation, with education. I'm very worried that, for example, the American public is so abysmally ignorant about the condition of the world. And yet, in our system, we cannot have a foreign policy that the public doesn't support. And a public that doesn't understand the world cannot support an intelligent policy. It's much more likely to be tempted by the simplistic, demagogic interpretations that some politicians are spreading around, particularly these days in the course of the presidential campaigns. Yeah. Let's talk about that for just a second. Because on the one hand, in America, we have this basically uninformed public that's very susceptible to demagogy. In China, 
we have a growing tendency towards a kind of emotional militant nationalism mm. among the public and you know China well so you know what I'm talking about it really is intense when it's jolted and then there is an institution of power that's not running the country but could be running the country at some future point and that's the army mm. which is very nationalistic mm. Go on. Supporting the campaign of Barack Obama. You know that we have people that uh, think about the conspiracy theories mm -hmm. of people like you. Uh, you would be a poster child for, for these people because you have served on the board of the Council on Foreign Relations. You started, helped start the Trilateral Commission, and you've been to the Bilderberg groups. Well, yes, I haven't done those for years, so that's partial redemption, I suppose. But uh, otherwise, yes. So what is, what is belonging to all those groups? We talked about the Trilateral Commission when you were here in 1989. But what about the association with that? Is there too, are people too close in this world, uh, people in business, too close to the, the governments? Well, you know, there, there is such a thing as insidious influence. And the question is, how does it operate? Does it involve bribery? And does it involve some sort of psychological domination? Of I don't believe in this notion of some sort of secret societies controlling people. But of course, in any political system, there are sort of over the table and under the table arrangements. As far as the organizations that you have mentioned, they're all on top of the table organizations. We know what they are, we know what they do. We probably exaggerate their influence in many cases, but most important of all, they operate overtly. Anybody who wants to know what the Council for Relations does can very easily find out. And once that person finds out, they'll probably discover that it really doesn't run the world, but often makes very useful recommendations. It is something yeah. British authorities hope never happens. This is London's biggest drill so far. Hundreds of emergency workers involved, all responding to an attack on the London Underground at the height of the games this coming August. In this case, a disused station in the heart of the capital. Actors simulate injured passengers being evacuated after an explosion. Up above, vehicles jostle for space, sniffer dogs check for further devices. Since then, security of the games has come under intense scrutiny. 40,000 staff will be on duty. The bill will top $700 million. Last month, Britain's Royal Navy practiced defending the River Thames from attack. Drills like these will continue right up to the opening ceremony on the 27th of July. Organizers say Wednesday's exercise was about leaving nothing to chance. We're working to provide uh, a safe and secure experience uh, for anyone who comes to London. Clearly, what we want to do is ensure that we're ready to be able to respond to anything that occurs. The real challenge, of course, is to prevent such an attack happening at all. That's the job of the intelligence services and the police. This exercise is preparation for the worst case scenario, that they fail. Simon McGregor would... Hello everyone, welcome to Global Government News. Today is Friday, February 24th, 2012, and I'm Darko. My website is ggnonline.com. Go check it out. I just posted a new poll the other day. And when do you think the crap is going to hit the fan? Also, ddarko2012 and 2013 are my YouTube channels. All links will be posted in YouTube's video description. So I showed the Zibrig Brzezinski uh, in there because it was on Wall Street Journal. It's pretty interesting because... When he speaks, usually you want to listen, but also the London security um, propaganda about how they're going to keep you safe, the government that is, from the real, from the terrorists, which are themselves, from attacking. So is a 9-11 attack facilitator alive and well in London, a Saudi businessman suspected of being involved in the September 11, 2001 false flag terrorist attack, is now living in London where he works for the Saudi oil company. And to kind of tie this in with Brzezinski, what he was saying, and that uh, security video about the false flag in London, 
Zygmunt Brzezinski, quote, Today, America would be outraged if U.N. troops entered L.A. to restore order, referring to the 91 L.A. riots. Tomorrow, they will be grateful. This is especially true if they were told that there were an outside threat from beyond, i.e., extraterrestrial invasion, stage aid stage alien invasion, sorry, whether real or promulgated, says here, uh, that threatened our very existence. It is then that all peoples of the world will plead to deliver them from this evil. The one thing every man fears is the unknown. When presented with this scenario, individual rights will be willingly relinquished for the guarantee of their well-being granted to them by the world government. So if you think I'm joking, FBI organizes almost all terror plots in the United States. That's right. They have over 100 and or sorry, 15,000 undercover agents today, 10 times what they had on the roster back in 1975. A report by Mother Jones uh, report says that the FBI regularly infiltrates communities where they suspect terrorist-minded individuals to be engaging with others regardless of their intentions. Uh, they could be potentially carrying out lone wolf attacks, more or less. They encourage them to do so. Like what? The underwear Patsy bomber and the Christmas bomber, a Christmas tree bomber. By providing weaponry, funds, and plans, FBI-directed agents will encourage otherwise unwilling participants to plot out terrorist attacks only to bust them before any events fully materialize so they can take credit for keeping you safe so they can get more funds. So this here, police launch anti-terror campaign. The Metropolitan Police have launched a counter-terror campaign urging people to report suspicious behavior by calling a dedicated hotline. It's a four-week campaign named, quote, It's Probably Nothing But Consists of Adverts in local and ethnic minority press, it's probably nothing but to go on there and say whether it's from Al-Qaeda or Irish dissident Republican groups, we can only do this with the support of all our co uh, comrades in our community. The terrorists live among us. We know you may have concerns about speaking to the police, possibly because you were tased to death or beat over the head with a with a baton because you were pissed off that your pension was gone. But you may well have information which could save lives. So if you are like in this individual, which could be considered a hero, and call out the real terrorists for what they're doing, uh, what you get to go to jail for life. That's right. I'm talking about Bradley Manning. So, uh, what, what did he do? He was aiding the enemy, right? Now, who's the enemy? Well, the enemy could be you. It could be me. It could be anybody that doesn't like these wars. What's happening with the uh, surveillance state? What's happening with the um, giving up our national sovereignty, as Brzezinski was talking about? If that's the case, you are the enemy. You are the terrorist. Pentagon says U.S. citizens with terrorism ties can be targeted in strikes. The Obama regime top Pentagon lawyer on Wednesday said that Americans who join El CIA, El CIA is what CIA backed terrorist group can be targeted for killing and that courts should have no role in reviewing executive branch decisions about whether someone has met such criteria. Of course, they've already killed an American citizen called who? Anwar Owl Laki. And they even killed his son when he went over there. But don't worry, the FAA has approved 30,000 drones to fly over U.S. airspace. That's right. Drone journalism takes off. That's right. This is from Australia. Drones play an increasingly role in warfare, but now... They're going to start flying for what? Eco-fascism, like the Blood River Hogs story that promoted drones. And now for what? For, oh, for propaganda or the news. Chances of central New York drone flights improve as new law allows six national test sites. Chicago will have eyes in the sky for NATO G8. Already, Chicago is taking on massive preparations to lock down the city during demonstrations. A private security firm is providing training to security forces, and Rahm Emanuel changed various ordinances, making it more difficult to organize a demonstration. And the Chicago police now have the power to deputize and enlist any other available security forces, and sharpshooters and other militarized types of law enforcement will be on hand. Check this out. City officials might say everyone will have the uh, ability to exercise their First Amendment, but when people choose to do so, it will be under a microscope, one held up by the law enforcement and attached to a, quote, less than lethal weapon, end quote. This is probably what's going to happen. As new protests loom, Chicago pays $6.2 million to settle false arrest of anti-Iraq war protesters back in the day. July 15, 2011, Pentagon wants a social media propaganda machine, and the FBI seeks developer for an app to track threats on social media. Low-wage Facebook contractor leaks secret censorship. It's called the Bible. Graphic nudity, uh, sexual fetishes, racial slurs, along with what? Oh, Holocaust denial. McCain to introduce cybersecurity legislation, giving even more domestic control to the NS. The UN may have a new treaty giving them unprecedented powers over the Internet. The kill switch comes through the PC with Windows 8. As a teen is almost shot for carrying a toy gun, a grandfather is facing jail for using his gun during a robbery. Thank you.